Okay, so it's time for us to, to worship our Lord. Um, Christ is the living stone. He is the cornerstone of our faith. He is building us into a spiritual house, into a, a holy priesthood. So let us all rise and sing our opening hymn, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. Jesus' name, let angels prostrate fall. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. Israel's chosen race, now ransomed from the fall. Hail him who saves you by his grace and crown him Lord of all. Hail him who saves you by his grace and crown him Lord of all. tongue and every tribe responsive to his call to him O majesty ascribe and crown him Lord of all to him O majesty ascribe and crown him Lord of all With all the sacred throng, we at his feet may fall. We'll join the everlasting song and crown him Lord of all. We'll join the everlasting song and crown him Lord.
you could uh, take a moment and pull out the uh, prayer list just to take a look at it. Um, and those prayers that are being requested. Let's hold them in our hearts and our minds and let us pray. Merciful, loving God, we thank you for all the many ways that you blessed us this week and answered so many of our prayers. But Lord, you never forget. Remember us in our time of need. Teach us to embrace sorrow, to celebrate healing, to tend to our whole garden. When we are broken in our living, May your presence be felt when we are afraid, when we are sad, when we are alone and in pain, when we fail and break promises and unravel the ties that bind us together. Renew us, revive us with your kindness. Remember us as your children who you created in your holy image, that you will love us until tomorrow. We come to you with grateful hearts this day. Oh Lord, we pray for our church. We pray for your spirit to encourage those who are curious about your word to walk through our doors, that they may discover your hope your love, your forgiveness, and your holiness through us, so that they would want to become a part of our holy family here at Rockwood First Congregational Church. God of healing, we have brought the names of those who are near and dear to us, who need your healing spirit to touch their lives. Bless them with something they can hold on to, and look forward to. We also lift up those who are on our prayer list and those who aren't. Lift up Bart Gross for visits and a successful rehab at Arius in Riverview. We also lift up Diane Scullis for successful cancer treatment and recovery. We also lift up Diane Allman for relief of pain in her leg and for a good prognosis and a rapid recovery. And Lord, you know, we are lifting up Michael Stiles' entire family this morning. We ask that you embrace them during this very difficult time for us and for our church. We also ask for healing spirit to touch our lives to fill us with things that will help us to be better disciples to those around us. At this time, we ask for your Holy Spirit to be with all those who are viewing this service outside the church and those who are here in the sanctuary. Touch us, fill our hearts with love, refresh our minds with new ideas, and guide our paths in holy ways as we lift up our prayers to you now in silence.
But Lord, give us the courage and the strength to be your voice, your hands, your feet, and your ears to those who are suffering. So we may bring your shining light into their sorrow. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It's time for us to uh, rise for our second hymn this morning. The Lord, allow your Holy Spirit to be with us. Be with us, fill us while we sing with your spirit. Fill our hearts with love. Fill us with grace. Fill us with compassion. Fill us with the courage to witness on behalf of your kingdom as we sing, Revive Us Again. We praise thee, O God, for the Son of thy love, for Jesus who died and is now gone above. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. We praise Thee, O God, for the Spirit of Light, who has shown us our Savior and scattered our night. Hallelujah, Thine the glory. Hallelujah, Amen. Hallelujah, Thine the glory. Revive us again. To the Lamb that was slain Who hath borne all our sins And hath cleansed every stain Hallelujah, thine the glory Hallelujah, amen Hallelujah, thine the glory Revive us again Revive us again Fill each child with thy love. May each soul be rekindled with fire from above. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. When you came into the sanctuary today, you had an opportunity to place an offering in our offering plate. If you missed an opportunity and you would like to make an offering, please raise your hand and our ushers will come to you. If you're online and you're watching our service, you can click on the link below and it will take you to a secured site and you can make an offering as well. We welcome your support. We are better together. We are better together when we join together in music, in missions, in ministry, and in fellowship. It is God who makes us better together. Kind of mixes in the spirit with us. We are built, we are built upon one another like living stones in the house of the Lord. So let us Join together, let us join together as we offer our gifts, our talents, and our resources, and our time for the mission and maintenance needs of Christ Church. As Christ's disciples, let us rise and sing the doxology together.
Let us uh, ready our hearts once again, focus on our Lord, and let us pray a prayer of dedication for all the offerings we received, all the time and talent we received yesterday and this whole week. So let us pray. God of overflowing abundance, you feed our spirits with spiritual milk. Nourish our souls with heavenly food. When the traps of this world threaten to overwhelm us, you become our fortress and our rock. You are there for us. We are grateful for your mercy and your many blessings. We offer you our gifts and ministries this morning so that this wounded world might know your grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning comes from 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 2 through 10. Like newborn babies, crave pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow up in your salvation, now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. As you come to him, the living stone, rejected by humans but chosen by God, and precious to him. You also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For in scripture it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts him will never be put to shame. Now you who believe, this stone is precious. But to those who do not believe, the stone that builders rejected has become the cornerstone, and a stone that causes people to stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the message, which is also what they were destined for, but you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. If we uh, back up a bit to 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 24, it says this, for all people are like grass, and all their glory is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall. But the word of the Lord endures forever, forever. And this is the word that was preached to you. So Peter's pointing this out. It's the word that's preached to us through the scriptures. Therefore, rid yourself of all malice, all deceit, all hypocrisy, all envy, all slander of every kind. Peter is asking us there to cleanse our house, to cleanse our house, God's temple within us, our house to clean out our hearts, to clean out our, our minds, and to clean out our souls. That this is our spiritual house, our spiritual house. This is where the Lord's Holy Spirit lives within us, our spiritual house. Think about this. What have we been putting into our spiritual houses these last three years during the pandemic. 
pandemic is officially over now, they say. But before that, we were isolated. We watched TV, all the news reports, and we were filled with what? All kinds of stuff, all kinds of narratives, all kinds of division. Social media was, was a thing too. Everybody had to be on that, their phones. So what have we been putting in there for three years? If I ask you to list all these things that you put into your house, all those things you've watched, all those things you've read, you might be able to put together a list of about 10% of what you put in to your spiritual house. Maybe a 1%. Sometimes I can't remember what I did yesterday. But these are the things we're feeding on. We're feeding on them. Especially where these worldly thoughts come from. Sometimes we just take things as they are and never question of where they came from or what the thought or motivation was behind them. A lot of those things, really, if you think about it, are useless. They were useless to us. Some of it might be valuable. Some of it might be valuable to someone, especially if they had a thread of good in it. Generally, it has value. They had a thread of love in it. They had a thread of compassion in it. But to who? But to who? Is there any room? This is the question I have. Is there any room in your spiritual house? Sometimes we are encouraged in life to do something different like grow spiritually. Maybe the Lord's touching you and saying, you need to grow spiritually. You need to really lean into this. But in order to do that, we have to clean out each room, each room of our house. That's our heart. That's our mind, all those thoughts. It's our soul. We need to clean them out of all the hatred, of all the unkindness, all the nastiness, all the deceit, all the nonsense, all the greed, all the hurtful talk, all these certain things do one thing. They turn us away from God's holiness. All of them. In our scripture, Paul gives us kind of three, I would say three illustrations to think about that are intended to help us grow our spiritual house, our hearts, our minds, our souls, as disciples of Jesus Christ. You know, the first illustration is this, that we have all tasted God's word. We've all tasted God's word in some way. We either have heard it, we've watched some episode about it, or you've heard someone talk or you've read the scripture, there's a whole host of things. You've tasted that word of God. We are to think of ourselves as newborns, babies. Well, it's kind of hard to imagine to think that I know you're, I'm a baby, but it's just to give us a thought about, it's like a new beginning. It's to, to crave the spiritual milk that's there. This is the beginning of our spiritual journey. Our spiritual journey is, is always happening. It's a, it's a day to day thing. It may be a beginning of a next phase for us or the second phase for us or the third phase for us, but we are always going to be new in some way of learning the spirit, learning God's word. When we crave spiritual food, it's kind of like this. It's kind of like dining with the Lord at the Lord's table. Every time we go there, it's kind of dining with the Lord at the Lord's table. And the more often we do that, the more Christ-like we become. It's like growing a new plant. Anybody ever grow a plant from a seed? Yeah, there's a few of us that have tried this. It's, it's a difficult challenge. It can be difficult to do. 
But there's that seed. You put it in the ground, right? You put that seed in the ground, you put the dirt on top of it, and it needs things, right? It needs certain things. It needs certain elements. It needs water, right? It needs some love and care, right? It needs air, sunshine. It needs good soil, right? And there's that one other thing that it really needs. It needs to be cultivated. What that means is you're going to what? You're going to clean up any of the weeds that are around there, okay? And that is kind of like cleaning your, the house, cleaning the house. It's similar to our Christian journey. We need that living water, the, the Son of God, to shine through the Word of God. We need that to shine through, God's Son, to shine through that Word for us, which helps us to grow stronger. It's kind of like the plant. It needs those things to grow stronger. It strengthens our hearts. It strengthens our minds. It strengthens our character. It actually changes our character. So we can grow our spiritual house. We all have them. They're all different. They're all in a different place today. The more spiritual milk we feed, and the stronger our love becomes for Christ. The stronger our love becomes for God. Does your spiritual house need to make room for divine things? Something need to be pushed up? Our actions on the outside of us, the things that we do on the outside, happens because of what's on the inside of us. So the things that we're doing on the outside, our reactions, the things that we say to others, are happening because of what's in here. The second illustration is this. We are living stones. Peter gives us an image of a living stone. It was Isaiah who spoke about it, that it was rejected as being worthless, but became the cornerstone. Even though Jesus is rejected by those who have blinders on, he was considered precious by God. Precious. Verse 5 says, like living stones, let yourself be built into a spiritual house, like living stones. Keep this in mind. We are all considered this, ministers of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are all considered ministers of the Lord Jesus Christ. Is your spiritual house cleaned up? Is it ready for the divine word of God? If so, you can expect this. You can expect the Holy Spirit to guide you. The Holy Spirit will guide you to do the Lord's work. You can expect that. To help those who are in need around you. The Spirit might nudge you. It might nudge you to help somebody at the grocery store. Somebody asks you, can you get that thing on the top shelf? You're thinking, well, what should I do? But the Spirit's nudging you, you can do it, you can help that person, and you pull it down and you give it to them. Or, you might be encouraged to stop by and visit your neighbor. Your neighbor has been really lonely these days, and you're encouraged to bring him a piece of cake, maybe, or maybe something to read, or just showing up and bringing your love and compassion and an ear. This one thing is that we can do nothing apart from God. When we're connected to God, we can no, cannot do nothing. We can do nothing apart from God. But we can do all good things, all good things, when we are united, united with the Spirit of Christ. Christ is considered the living stone. Again, he was condemned by the Jewish leaders for being insignificant, and he was crucified for it. Now, Peter tells us those who follow Jesus are the same as living stones. So if we follow Jesus, we are the same as living stones. 
The Lord is our cornerstone. The scripture, if you look at the scriptures, there's some similarities here. In Isaiah 28, 16, it says, God says, I am laying in Zion a foundation stone, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. Those who trust in him will not panic, will not panic, meaning they will find love. They will find peace. They will find compassion. And they surely will find salvation that brings them to eternal life. Day by day, our living stone, our living stone, is being built up. Day by day, it's being built up. More and more and more within our spiritual house. As Christ's church, we are a living temple, a temple that is made up of living souls. That's you, 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 and I, and our Lord Jesus Christ. He is our foundation. He is at the top of this church. He's the one that leads it. He brings life to the spiritual temple. He brings life to all of us. We are alive because He is alive. We are alive because He is alive. My friends, as you know, we are living in trying times. We're living in very difficult times. We are living in some unusual times, I would say. It's important that we do not place a lot of value on the perishable things in this world. Really. We should be placing a lot of value on those things. Why? Because they will become our stumbling blocks. They become the stumbling blocks for us to grow. What's the only thing that's more valuable than gold? It's our faith. It's our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, our living stone, our cornerstone. So I ask you again, what's the only thing that's more valuable than gold on this earth? Our faith. Our faith. Our faith in who? Yeah. The Lord Jesus Christ. The third illustration is this, which is exciting that we are a chosen people. Peter gives us a new identity in Christ. He tells us that Christians are a chosen people. We are selected by God for a purpose. We all have a purpose. And you were selected for, for, by God for a purpose. And that purpose is to serve God in some way in your life. To witness to others about God's grace and love, we are chosen to speak out. We're supposed to speak out on God's behalf when we see something that's not right, when we see something that's not loving, when we see something that's not, that doesn't have compassion in it. To do His work, we are chosen people of God. We are His royal priesthood. We are all ministers of the Lord Jesus Christ. His royal priesthood. His holy nation. We're connected to that. We are recipients of God's mercy. Peter tells us in, in verse 10, verse 10, as a people, we once lived without mercy. We lived without mercy. But in Christ, we are now, we are now the people of God who receives grace. That God has taken us from, really from nothing, to something good, something great, something wonderful. From being rejected by the world, 
to being accepted into God's heavenly kingdom. I mean, think about that. That's a big shift to grow our spiritual house. To grow our spiritual house. I say God is good. All the time. And all the time, God, God is, is good. good. Amen. Amen. My friends, uh, we've been touched by the Lord's Holy Spirit this morning. We've had communion with our Lord. We've given God thanks and praise for the many blessings in our lives. And we have lifted up many prayers today for those we care about and those we love. And today we've learned about how important it is for us to grow our spiritual house. So with grateful hearts, let's celebrate God's love. Let's celebrate God's promises as we sing together our closing hymn, Here I Am, Lord. the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry, all who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will save.
Instead I Lord I have heard you Calling in the night I will go I say amen. Amen. Let us go forth as Christ's disciples, those who are thirsty for spiritual milk that allows us to grow, to grow our spiritual houses as we depart in peace together this day and always. Amen. Amen.